individuals that use technology to make change at scale. So Razom is one of those organizations. And I'm thrilled to hand over the Razom IT Speaker Series to Dasha and Nastya, which I'm going to do right now. Okay. So, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go briefly on what Razom and Razom IT is. Like many of you know what Razom is. Razom exists for two and a half years and started as a group of volunteers who care about Ukraine, wanted to uh, have to see Ukraine prosperous country and um, for two and a half years uh, people are working very hard on it. Razum IT is a part of, um, is one of the initiatives of Razum and the speaking series that we attend today is one of, uh, of the initiatives in Razum IT and uh, we're trying to bring people that are uh, connected to Ukraine and uh, work in tech community. So uh, we're trying to meet people in intersection of technology and Ukraine. So, so yeah. today we're going to part. So the whole point is to um, uh, amplify the voices of the people in the tech ecosystem in Ukraine. Back in Ukraine, here conversations happening in the West. So uh, today in particular is all about discussion, 100% inclusive. We're gonna pull behind the curtain of how these two awesome co-founders um, managed to run a business that was born in Ukraine in the United States. Um, and the, so the way it's gonna run, we're gonna have a quick presentation from them about their team um, and the business that they run. Um, then Nick and Murad will join and jump into the discussion, and soon after that, Nick will open it up to the audience. Um, we're excited that you all joined us. You're now part of the Razmati community. Um, our sponsor tonight is, of course, the call that gave us the space, um, the Self-Reliance Credit Union in New York, and of course, our wonderful volunteers who managed to bring this whole group together. Thank you, big thank you to you guys. So first up is going to be Alexandra Rohachova. She was born in Kolomoya. Uh, she got her master's in computer science from Kharkiv. She uh, worked as a business analyst before in a software company, before founding Incunter uh, with a group of developers in 2014. She has just, uh, Incunter has just entered the ERA summer session. Ostap, Kovalisko is from Lviv, and he's since 17 years old. He studied abroad in uh, Poland, France, and Spain, and he entered the ERA with um, book buses as the CTO uh, this January, and they graduated just in April, and you'll hear him present as well. of Encounter. Encounter is an app that uses augmented reality to save them from regrets. Uh, our team consists, our core team consists of two person, I am and Pavlo. Uh, it's a core team. We meet, met each other about four and a half years ago uh, when we were studied in Harvard National University in computer science. Uh, so and uh, right now uh, we, solve, uh, we solved and solving the problem of tattooed people and, peop and tattooed enthusiasts. Uh, the 25 percent of Americans have at least wanted to, and usually they have a lot of questions. We should they choose where should be and where to do it. So, and to answer to all these questions, they spent a lot of time and efforts, and we're going to change it. Right now, uh, we developed an app that uses augmented reality to sell the, to show them how your future tattoo will look on your body. You just need to choose to upload your own, then try it on yourself and share to your friends or to your artists. And in this way, choose to do you want and save you from regrets. 
Uh, during the last four, two and a half months, we get really great traction from the App Store. Uh, we got around four, and it's a lot numbers, I think, 1.2, 2.1 million downloads. Uh, with uh, a higher rating, rating in App Store, it's around four and a half uh, stars. Next. Um, the market of two services is pretty big. There are uh, three and a half million dollars per year people spend in US for the two, um, for the two stuff. And it's a uh, 25, it's 20% of global market. Uh, right now, we generate lead for two artists and for temporary two services and, and other related businesses. In the future, we are going to uh, not only generate lead for them, but also uh, sell, them, sell temporary tools and, and other two related things into the app. Uh, right now, as I mentioned before, our team consists of uh, two founders, co founders, as I am end of law. Uh, also, we have uh, two awesome uh, high experience developers, it's Alessa and Albert, uh, with high experience in high-touch projects. Uh, and mentors, so there are a lot of mentors here. I described uh, mentors from Harvard National University and from other business schools where we, we were studied and uh, our lawyer and advisor. Next, please. Uh, here's our history. It's long and uh, maybe for some people, uh, since it's hard. We started about two years ago in Hackathon, so 48 Hackathon. Uh, there was uh, four people, three girls and one guy. Uh, we developed uh, without iPhone, without MacBooks, without anything. We, <laughs> we developed uh, iOS app and start to thinking about that. Then happened a lot of things. Uh, we don't uh, work in full, full time, but in the start of this year, uh, I'm Pavlo as a core team. We, develop, we hired two developers and designer and started working on this project full time and uh, launched a great app which was uh, version uh, 2.1 uh, and then applied to around 11 acceleration program and decided to take part in ERA program. And right now we are he really happy about that. So it's our short story. If you have any questions, I'm glad to answer to that. Thanks. Um, I guess the questions will, will come be part of the discussion. Okay. So I'm stop sorry. here on. Uh, hello, I am Ostap Kovlitsko. I am a CTO and co-founder of bookbuses.com. Uh, so, uh, what is BookBuses? Uh, BookBuses is a marketplace uh, for renting charter buses. Uh, how many people of you was renting uh, bu uh, bus, for example? Probably not a lot or someone. <laughs> uh, usually, like right now, it's really hard and complicated process because like you're going on like really old website from like 95, uh, you know, it's like really, really old and not nice. You, you making request, request uh, like this kind of size. So you need to scroll like three times after that you send request. And after that you're waiting for kind of like one week and maybe they will return with the price. So how is looking right now? Uh, by the way, uh, this number, you know what this number is, this mean? 600 miles kilometers. Uh, basically it's, uh, uh, more miles. Uh, uh, miles, sorry. Uh, I'm still in European coordinates. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is amount uh, of miles to uh, from uh, Earth to Jupiter, or it's the, the same amount of of miles that uh, Americans uh, doing on charter buses, uh, not on regular buses, but charter buses that you re rent for event. It's really a lot. Uh, so this number starts uh, to our uh, to be interesting to our team. Uh, next. Because it's uh, uh, 14 billion um, dollars industry, uh, and this industry are not developed at all. It's stuck in uh, in past, uh, uh, in really really past. Uh, everybody know how to buy a ticket for a flight. Everybody know how to buy ticket, uh, how to rent a car. Everybody know how to rent, I don't even bike. Now it's so easy, but bus, you have really a lot of problems to do this. Um, so usually uh, this taking one week to get the quote for your uh, travel. If you want to go to 
marriage, uh, uh, you need the bus, you want to send chills uh, to, for example, some camp. This will take you just a week to get the price. So imagine if you want to really organize it, it's, it, it's a problem. Uh, yeah. So uh, basically it's a reality of uh, renting charter buses right now. It's each of websites looking like this. It's what I was telling, and after that you wait for, for one week, and we were thinking that it sucks, because it is. Uh, it's, uh, as I was telling, it's taking too much time. Next one. Uh, so we built the predictive uh, pricing algorithms, so we can now basically price uh, without uh, operators, bus operators, because they will answer for one week. Uh, like real life situation, sometimes you call into operators and trying to ask about the price, and they tell you something. It's not mass, it's life. Uh, so they're not doing business so well, let's say. Uh, so our algorithm uh, was built uh, based on like, huge amount of data, huge amount of parameters, data points. Uh, so we kind of can predict uh, exact price. Uh, for the trip, uh, so after that we uh, like we we predicting price, we showing to customer, customer can buy it, and after that just we uh, sourcing bus for them. Uh, I would like to present you really short video. It will explain a lot about uh, about book buses. Oops. It was not converted. Uh, it was probably not converted. Uh, from, from, from All right. Uh, we'll unfortunately, I will send you a video a little bit later because <laughs> I think it was uh, not converted from Keynote to uh, Google. Yeah. So, uh, shortly about my team, it's Oscar, Bjorn, uh, and me. Uh, so, uh, each of us have quite international experience, uh, and I think uh, one of the important pro uh, part of the project is not just project is the team is who is making this and I'm really happy about my team. Yeah. And enjoy the ride. Use book buses. If somebody needs to rent uh, some bus, let me know. Is the video on your website? Uh, uh, should be probably. Yeah, should be. Uh, yeah. yeah or you, you can put on just buses.com on website. Russian 
uh, speaking Ukrainian you know, market, and it has evolved since then to uh, uh, I think 15 countries. I've I've been um, I've exited the project in uh, 2010, and I've been in the media industry. Uh, I worked in one of the biggest uh, startup exits in Ukrainian history called Butyl. That was before the uh, the recent, which uh, the recent exit, um, which uh, overshadowed <laughs> uh, that. And uh, right now. I've pivoted my career towards doing clean tech and energy efficiency, solar and batteries. Um, so I, um, I would like first to thank you guys. It's such an interesting and inspiring, inspiring example, and I would love uh, Murat to introduce himself. Uh, sure. So my name is Murat Akhtianoglu. Um, I run, I'm one of the founders of PRA. We invest in early stage tech startups, and we also run the accelerator. Thank you. So uh, the plan right now is to, uh, you know, kick off the conversation, uh, and and then after, you know, after five minutes, we'll open it up, uh, we'll open it up to questions. So my first question uh, to, I guess, to both of you guys would be. Um, when did you, for, you know, when did you first seriously entertain the idea of becoming an entrepreneur? Uh, don't you first or me? You, 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 <laughs> looking <Okay>. at you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, basically I started to program quite early and uh, the good thing of programming is you can get money quite early as well. So I was uh, like basically from age 16 year old, I was like selling some web shops or whatever, making some pages, and it was quite exciting because in some uh, good gigs you can make more than your parents. That was super exciting. <laughs> and uh, after that, I'm, I, s I go to university and basically it's uh, shut down my business uh, because I needed to study, as my parents was uh, uh, quite convinced. Um, after I moved to regular job uh, as a developer, I was thinking that like, uh, the things that we're doing can cost like a little bit more, so uh, let's try maybe some kind of internship. So I uh, start to run my small web agency with a, with a few of my partners, and it start to give some benefits. So it was crucial, let's say, uh, turn in my in my life. I understand that this is this area is much better than regular corporate job. Thank you, So uh, my first work work was in the lab. So I have a different experience and uh, also have experience in uh, outsourcing company, software, software outsourcing company, and I decided and understand that it's not my way. Uh, I want and I will and I'm going to do something by myself, maybe as something special, some unique and something that I can uh, make efforts and it will grow. That's why I decide. Got it. Um, do where are you? Uh, where are you inspired by any particular figure? Um, some famous. Yes. Actually, right now it's maybe some famous people. It was some woman in the uh, entrepreneur and uh, some guy like Elon Musk. And <laughs> what about you? I basically maybe it's not never so you has someone like big. I just. I was convinced that like working hard can, can, can give results and like I for me kind of ideal person who was like really working working a lot. So it's like not some somebody particular but just somebody who who not expect it as a gift or something, just like work, work a lot and get a lot uh, back. So but no particular person. Got it. Uh, Murat, uh, in, in, in in your programs on average, uh, the founder demographic is it is it so much skewed towards you know the eighteen to twenty nine age group or 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 what what would you how would you quantify that the age groups oh, yeah, uh, sure. your founders okay uh, yeah we have like young people that just finished school we have older people that have been in the industry for like 10-15 years 
we even had founders in their like fifties. So it's all over the place. Yes, that's that's New York. You know, and in Ukraine, I, I, I just wanted to highlight that because in Ukraine, uh, building a startup is is an activity of the of the younger generation. Right. You know, we are we are we are in the, you know it's it, it, the younger generation uses the internet a lot, and there's a lot of uh, inspiring resources. And being an entrepreneur is 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 very is you know just socially, just socially in, in big cities. Is very cool. Um, so, uh, can you, because you know, maybe some people in the audience have not uh, sure. well heard about ERA. Uh, sure. Just a couple of sentences. When did you start it, and how sure. many companies went? Uh, you have graduated from the program. Sure, right? we started the ERA in 2011, and then <coughs> we run now. Uh, they are in our 11th class, and we invested in 113 companies so far. 113, great. And uh, around 15% of these companies have been global companies. We have companies from Korea, Ukraine, Denmark, uh, South Africa, Brazil, uh, Colombia, Ecuador, Canada, and uh, I'm also originally from Turkey. So today, actually, I'm very proud to be here because I'm from Turkey. I've been in the US for 23 years. And I know people like not in the US, they feel like they do not have a chance to live the big life like Elon Musk. He came from South Africa. I know. Role model. But I think the main point is uh, if you have a great team, if you have a good idea, and if you work hard, uh, you don't need to be in Silicon Valley. Like there are two examples here. Yeah. Uh, such a great example, like when we started looking at the company, we were so impressed with everything from technology to team to like they've been so persistent and they built a great product. So I think anyone in Ukraine can do this. They have the, it's possible. Got it. Uh, did, uh, was, was Ostav your first Ukrainian co-founder or were there people before him? We had people before uh, as co-founders or maybe like as later employees of our portfolio. Uh, we had people from all over the world, but he was the first like you know hardcore co-founder CTO. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, thanks a lot. So um, I, I I I think we can open up the discussion to to questions now. We you know uh, there's a lot of things I want to touch upon. You know, uh, one thing would be. Uh, job creation opportunity in U uh, opportunities in Ukraine. Another uh, the debate about you know uh, because we have two quite different startups here. One is a B two C uh, oriented startup. Another one is more uh, more feeding on you know getting and disrupting an existing B two B industry. Um, so uh, if anyone wants to ask the questions, feel free to raise your hand. I have a question for Murat. So, uh, how do you find these companies? Uh, that's the best part. We have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> how companies find ERA? We are just lucky. Is it also another question? Do people apply online? Like, how can, right. you know, if I have a company and I want to be part of sure. the program, what Anyone do I do? can apply on our websites when we open applications. And then, I think, like, people post it around the places, the governments, like, uh, tell about our program. Also, like I met some uh, investors and executives from the Ukraine. They may have posted to their networks, but we have no idea. But we are so <coughs> happy to get these great applications. What about the selection process? Sure. So, like for this summer, we got more than like 1,500 applications, and then we uh, brought it down to 100, and then we interviewed all 100 companies either face to face or over Skype. And then we brought it down to 35. And then from 35, we tried to go down to 10. We couldn't, so we took 12 companies. <laughs> um, how, how, how do you compare yourself to the tech startups? So I mean, like, this is like well-known name, right? That we've established, accelerator. Oh, um, they're great. They're a great program. Uh, they do a great job. They have a great track record. But why would I apply to <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> Great question. Uh, I don't know how useful. No, like I can ask you, but like how 
useful it is to this discussion. Uh, every successful Ukrainian company should apply to all the programs and pick the best one. Yeah. Very good match for some companies, very good match for some other companies. They are very hands on. After the program, we don't stop helping companies. Some accelerators you should research, they stop helping you. You email them, they don't reply, you call them, they don't take the phone call. We keep helping you until you exit or until the company dies. There are many differences, but yeah. A similar question, but on the startup side to, to Sasha and all this. I could answer because uh, we could uh, apply as well for 10 startups and we make um, a really big research before and based on our calculation ERA was uh, let's say uh, in New York is the best because we're not the tech stars. They have branches everywhere so what they don't have, you will not get this attention from these people because it's like it's everywhere. Uh, here uh, you're kind of unique <laughs> uh, in some point uh, so um, you why we choose huge network, good mentors. Uh, like basically, I, I, I didn't have expectation before accelerator because like I was not familiar what is a accelerator. But the good thing you introduced to top people, to, for example, product manager from uh, from Spotify, uh, like some really really cool people. With uh, I know my CTO mentor, it was like a CTO of big media group uh, in states, like really big media group, and you can ask questions to the person who's probably paid per hour, <laughs> like, I don't know, really, really big amount of money. So uh, you have access to these people, and I'm not sure that you can get this access to these people like, just just everywhere. It's, it's, it's really important. And as well as the mentoring inside of uh, Accelerator, it, it was great, starting from, from total ground zero. Yeah. I also mean, uh, answer for this question. Uh, actually, uh, I found around 20 accelerator from around the world. Uh, then we, we, we applied, we choose 11, we applied for them. It uh, was in the fifth, fifth uh, place. We just applied for all of them. But this area was an um, interesting situation because we applied for all the acceleration program before our traction start, before our new uh, I was virtual before we got traction, and Era wrote to us a message: uh, something changed. And we, yes, and it was really cool because we started speaking more, and uh, my expectations from acceleration from acceleration program is good, and it's really uh, realized uh, because we, we have a lot of meetings uh, with cool guys with a big experience, which we can scale for our situation and uh, got some, get some uh, advice and um, uh, ex some advice and suggestion from them to our project. And it's great. What about the legal side of things? Uh, you, I mean, meaning, meaning do, you, do, you, do, you give, uh, do you have legal advisors? Or, uh, for, yes. for example, for Alexandra, I guess, they are uh, coming out of Ukraine in force as, a port, as opposed to a stuff who has, uh, you know, American-oriented co-founders. Uh, Eric have a legal partners, so they help us to do all the stuff. And right now, uh, right now also help us with all the questions, and they cover it, all these questions, and also, uh, this, we have uh, some discount and amount of money uh, from this company. It's, it was awesome for us. That's great. A uh, question that I find always interesting is basically like when startups start in general, it's like where did you get the idea? Is it frustration with some specific industry? Is it for just, I just want to earn a lot of money? Too many tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. more directed to the startup. Founders. The history was simple. Uh, it was in the fourth and third course in the university. Uh, we decided to take part in acceleration, in <laughs> acceleration, but in hackathon. So, and the theme of hackathon was augmented reality and mobile apps. So we started thinking and brainstorming about some different ideas for augmented reality, which are not exist yet. So we started thinking about some variable like clothes, 
uh, accessories, makeup, muscles, and then started thinking about ink because uh, one of uh, co-founder, ex-co-founder, she watched Miami Ink when she, when she was <laughs> in town. So, and we started thinking and uh, found that nothing like that exists and starting with it is really cool. Uh, who has an iPhone here? Oh. Okay, and who hasn't downloaded that yet? <laughs> you have it. It's so cool. Like, you have to use it. It's super cool. Why? And you need to spend to draw through lines on your skin. You just do this. And a, like my co-founder, John Axrod, he has an 18 months old daughter. And then like you're looking at the company, and then he was spending to add. And he did it on his daughter's face, <laughs> and smile, and he took a photo of her, his daughter with the tattoo. It's like Mike Tyson tattoo. <laughs> and then he was about to send the photo to his wife. So, Look what I did today. <laughs> I was like, don't do that. <laughs> Divorce is expensive. But it's a super cool place. Like send your friends a like photo with tattoo on your face and like do you like this? <laughs> so a question. Just that social aspect. Well, obviously he's not going to tattoo the face of his eighteen month girl, but it's a fun thing to do. So is that part of your business plan? Uh, you mean viral effect? Yeah, actually it's help us to grow faster. Okay. And we uh, focus, sometimes we, uh, we separate our efforts and one of part is uh, viral features which can help us to grow faster. Yeah, so one question I had for both of you guys was like, what would you name like a single event uh, that impacted your business the most? Uh, in our case, it was one article to Daily Mail resource. We just wrote email for journalists from Daily Mail, it was a website, so, and they say that we will wrote an article about us. And after this event, it was a boom, the snowball about these articles which wrote about us something. It was an event. Yeah. What about you? A uh, big uh, changement, I guess, it was uh, when we started the acceleration program, like our revenue was like on level of in January, I guess, like 4,000. And in one of the latest months, like in April, in one of the uh, day, it was like revenue uh, 12,000. And in this moment, we were fiercely like, oh, 12,000 after 12,000. It's like whole February. And it's like it's like two, two a few few genres. Yeah, in one day, yeah. we're doing something important. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so bad. <laughs> so this change, uh, it's, but, not, it's not but changing. But can you pinpoint an, an if, like a single event, or you guys were always like uh, throughout the accelerator? Like it, we, yeah, it was honestly like really busy with jobs. So it was <laughs> like not 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 seeing this progress. You know, sometimes you just need to the focus for a second, and in one moment. Okay, so it's things going to <laughs> Initially, they were doing, like most things, like when you do a startup, most things were manual, it was behind the scenes, like yeah. manual things. And I'll stop, finish the algorithm for like predictive pricing, and then he made things automatic, and people started booking, like without any intervention, manual intervention. More, more. That changed <laughs> things. Yeah. That made things like much bigger. Yeah. Just become visible in, 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 in like, a little bit later because we was like all focused on job and in this moment when you see this result you can compare to something that you have already some statistic and history. And another thing in one in our case it was a thing as a difference between a 2.0 and 2.1 version of iOS app. Uh, Pasha, uh, CTO of our company, he changed uh, smile recognition algorithm uh, that because people uh, draw smile in different styles like with big uh, eyes with some um, really different. So, and before our uh, our algorithm, um, the algorithm which was written by him, uh, recognized only square smile and then deform deformate the uh, sketch. And in the next version, he uh, just uh, get understand algorithm how this smile is really drawing and then put the two on this. So, and then every people, every, Average people can use this app, even children. So that was event from over. 
Natasha. I have a question, like in terms of your being an accelerator for a stop, like you ended the program, where are you moving right now? I know you stayed in New York, but like how you plan to move to develop your company and for Alexandra, like you've been here for three weeks, so what do you feel right now you got from accelerator and are you planning to stay here and like so many questions. No, so it's like it's one question, it's just well, a different perspective because so like they are on different stages. Okay, so I will start in this case. So, uh, as I was mentioning, when we start Accelerator, we have like, like quite poor statistics. We end Accelerator, like we start from like few thousand per month, and we end Accelerator with like 80,000 revenue per, per, per month. So, since this time we started, and we're trying to grow with the same speed because it's really uh, like crucial and important uh, in case of communication with investors. <laughs> Uh, so we're trying to, to, to grow with, with the same speed and about uh, localizations. So we as core team will stay in US, we should stay in US. Alternatively, like we we planning to open a few offices around the world. So for, for, for example, now in Ukraine is working uh, a few people for us and we planning to expand this. So until end of summer, if things will be going as planned, we'll have small team there, a few, a few people, and uh, developers and uh, operations. For now we start from operations, because it's, it's a simpler task, and after that we try to move to development as well. Uh, and uh, at least for the next four months we will be there, it's, of course, during the program. And then it's something that at least one person need be in the US uh, in a lot of time, so we're thinking uh, to obtain a uh, visa for one of the, of us or hire someone from the US. This we just decided when we will be in the end of the program. Uh, what about your users? Where are they? Uh, actually, from worldwide, uh, the twenty first percent of them is from US. And then most part is uh, 20, 20, 20 percent from US, and another biggest part is from Brazil, Mexico, and then Brazil, China, and Europe. So. <laughs> <laughs> you choose. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. So uh, let me let me shift gears a little bit into uh, into the whole business model question. So, you know, there's always, and some startups struggle with this when you are, and your startups are actually good examples of um, choosing the model because you, uh, you can, both Alexandra's startup and your startup can engage both the end customer and the service provider. So how was your thinking in a, in a in a couple of short sentences, how was, how was your thinking of the revenue model B two B versus B two C evolving? Uh, Stop. So uh, now uh, we we have as, as uh, business clients as normal clients, so it's B two C and B two B. We trying to move more to B two B because it's uh, honestly more reliable. It's bigger. Uh, cash flow, let's say. Uh, sometimes like just simple clients like. Uh, uh, is the reason why we uh, why we skip the party buses? They run, they call. Oh, okay, what's up? We want to go somewhere. Like, what's the price of bus? <laughs> and not, honestly, it's it's really a situation. But after that, somebody needs to, to work on this quote to find to sort of bus, and in the end, they can't get money or whatever. So, for example, we skip party bus for those reasons. So we want to move to totally corporate uh, area because the clients are re re repeatable and stable. Okay. What about you? Uh, actually, there are a lot of partners uh, from Tattoo World and not only from Tattoo World, like from media, from films, from alcohol and other brands. I'm interested in our, uh, audit our target auditory and uh, right now we are not, we, we are thinking we, we will generate lead for them, but right now we are focusing on uh, increased retention and engagement for our users and then we will increase these numbers to our KPIs, uh, we will uh, open opportunity to uh, provide branded sketches into the app for our partners, which we have agreements with them. Actually, before we have an ads into the app, the usual ads uh, like Google 
analogy, but it's not uh, from it's not appropriate to the world, and we just exit because it's not appropriate appropriate to the world, and we are going to add only to world and for our audience. So you 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 tried monetizing with ads. Usually early, earlier, and then you quit doing. Yes. And then you quit doing because that. Because it's ugly and <laughs> it's bad. There's bad. usual ads, like in a lot of apps and other apps. Another another thing that we touched on was uh, Ukraine, right? So how you touched a little bit on how you plan to uh, create jobs in Ukraine. But Alexandra didn't. So, what's your plan? Mm -hmm. uh, right now, uh, here in uh, New York, uh, are I am and Pablo, co-founders, and also we have two developers. Uh, they are in Ukraine right now. Also, we have uh, outsourced design also from Ukraine. So, we create three workplaces right now, and then when we will grow, we are going to also hire developers from. From Ukraine, but maybe uh, some guys from sales from US. Well, yeah, that, that makes <laughs> sense. But in terms of the, the, the tools themselves, uh, in, my, in my case, for example, I remember uh, there was an ad company, and one of the innovations was that we did outsource the ad operations part mm -hmm. and the creative part to Ukraine as well. So, you know. Some, when, when, when people say outsourcing in Ukraine, they, they, they almost always imply engineering or software development. Well, it's not actually true. Ukraine does compete in business process outsourcing. You just have to know, uh, you know, just have to know good, good spots, good local schools. In my case, it was uh, Shatomer, for example. Shatomer has a really good language school, and we were able to recruit uh, recruit people uh, graduating with great English and work on in the ad operations team. Uh, anyone else from the audience? I have a question to add. <laughs> uh, so, just to touch uh, on what Nick said, from your experience running this for what is it, five years now? Six years. Six years. Uh, do you do many of your companies that you invest in outsource to Eastern Europe? May I answer to this question a little bit? <laughs> Actually, a velocity of the company working in the company which developed the product to one of the era previous company one. previous in the previous. We company. have companies with yes. open <laughs> centers in Poland, Estonia, that's why they only build in they're like twenty dollars. And we have many like developers in Ukraine. Obviously, like you know this, but technical talent is huge in uh, Ukraine. And uh, as Nick said, you know there are more, there's more talent in Ukraine. But uh, yes, so even like the company with the uh, office in Estonia, Tallinn, they are really well funded. They raised over like twelve million dollars, and that was part of their fundraising process that they are not going to have like two hundred thousand dollars a year. Developers sitting in Manhattan, mm. they're gonna have like really great developers costing like 40,000 somewhere else. So that's an advantage to have this kind of uh, developers living somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. So, uh, is actually, is better or what? Tech is better than us? Or <laughs> 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 what question to start up? So, what was your biggest mistake? I mean, like, you know, many startups, for example, work for half a year on the product only to ship it to customers and realize, you know, it's not what people know. What, what, what was your story? Right. I'm not thinking that we made some huge mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so far. <laughs> like, you know, uh, some small mistakes, like, it's A-B testing, it's every day. Every day you, you come up with some idea, you, you're trying it, and if it's not working, it's a mistake, if it's working, it's good, so you're choosing this one. And this uh, constant process that, like, really every day. Every day we're trying to test, like I know, new marketing. Let 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 let's check this board. So let's check, I know, let's check this button. Let's check this messaging. Maybe this work. If it's not work, uh, our statistic will <laughs> easily show it to us, and <laughs> we'll need to <laughs> to change it uh, as soon as possible. Like I guess part of us was a mistake. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it, it was because you, you, you can't believe in which state uh, this yeah, part yeah. of us can be. Uh, <laughs> 
after party. <laughs> like you had some problem with uh, uh, suppliers to explain <laughs> why <laughs> what's like this. What about uh, you? Me? Uh, actually, of course, we create a lot of mistakes uh, during all this time, and one of them, maybe not the so big, but I think it was uh, we don't implement sign up feature into our previous version. <laughs> And we don't get a connection with this users, which was downloaded during the last two and a half months. Oh, so Sorry. no sign up? Sign up. Sign up. Sign up. Yes. Hmm. I have a question for that. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's say someone from Ukraine is watching this now or later. Like, what's your advice to entrepreneurs in Ukraine? Well, let's start. Uh, no, Alexandra first. You, you were always first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think uh, it will be uh, don't uh, lose your enthusiasm and uh, stay working hard in your product and then after some a lot of mistakes, uh, a lot of goals, we, you will win. What about you? Uh, what? I'm not afraid. I guess it's like it's applicable not just for startup for because people always afraid of something and they think always that they worse than everybody else. But reality can be totally different. Well, and you know, just to have a reality check, most startups fail. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yes, if 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 you if you validated your idea enough, if you have good feedback. If you have people backing you, and uh, and you know, and you feel that you can compete in the global economy, uh, go for it. It's you know Ukraine. Uh, the, the the newest thing coming out of Ukraine is actually hardware startups. So there's a lot of hardware startups coming out of Ukraine, which are a little bit harder to build than software startups. But you know, there's um, um, there's a lot of opportunity in the global market. So keep trying. Yes, yes. Uh, um, a bit political, but uh, your um, your accelerator works with a lot of companies that are in developing countries and countries that in the past had sort of uh, socialist uh, leanings. Have you ever encountered any political difficulty or any resistance from the people who are like? Should be building companies here, or that's, you know, any any kind of difficulty in that area. Okay, uh, reasons from people from from either locals in the area, uh, in in those countries, or uh, any political resistance. Uh, I mean, we are in New York, so um, I'm trying to understand. Look, we have a company or the co-founders from Egypt. He went to Colombia as a PhD, and I'm from Turkey, and uh, a lot of problem areas. We have founders from Lebanon. Uh, we never directly got any, like, don't do this or something like that. It's mostly great, like, thanks for working with our founders here. you do need English, a uh, good level of English. What happens if a team has a great idea, but doesn't have, they can't scale it's our situation. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> how would you work for it? Of course, we spent more time than US guys, mm -hmm. but we have, but we work a little bit more than that. That's all. <laughs> so you started, started English? Yes. Specifically for this, or you start? Okay. And here we just in every program we just spent a little bit more time than U.S. guys because we have some sometimes we have some difficulties with uh, understanding what mm -hmm. they want, what they advise. So we need to do a little bit more spend time. That's all. One one question I, we didn't bring up with our staff is uh, how did you meet your co-founders? Uh, so basically. Mm -hmm. I met founder from Denmark, okay. and I had a chance uh, to work in Denmark for some time and basically to some connections. Uh, but, and like uh, this winter, when I start to look to quit my normal job, I start to look uh, for uh, good solid co-founders, and it wasn't the guys. <laughs> yeah. 
Great. 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 Put yourself back in Ukraine with all the challenges you have. So we also have a lot of volunteers of Razum watching us, and uh, we have Razum in Ukraine growing up. So you you just talking uh, told about your personal experience, but if you think about the infrastructure in Ukraine, what do you think is the next step? How would you help the tax system, tax society in Ukraine to prosper? Like what sh should we help with? What can we do to help? to bring them to the next level, to overcome those challenges that you maybe have had recently. Would you be useful if you show success stories for them that understand that... Doing right now? Yes. Yeah, exactly. You already did it. <laughs> so it's maybe, it, it will be really... Also, when we will start, we're looking for a lot of uh, already success in entrepreneurs from Ukraine, and it inspired us because we, we understand that everything can happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, I, I encourage I encourage everyone to look up uh, um, to look up uh, serial entrepreneurs from Ukraine. I mean, Ukraine has uh, the startup movement I, in Ukraine started, uh, you know, in, in the two thousands, and since then there are lots of stories and lots of serial entrepreneurs. Um, you know, I'm, in, I'm I'm somewhere in the middle, but there are some really successful people out there building products and building the next big thing. Thanks a lot, everybody. It will be the next big thing. <laughs> <laughs>